Well, spring camp is barely in its second week, and Pitt has already suffered a season-ending injury. The Pat Narduzzi announced the news yesterday that Nate Temple, super senior defensive end, will not be with the team this season, or will not be playing with the team in the season after he suffered what Narduzzi called a lower leg injury during uh, practice in the first week of spring camp. A remarkable amount of transparency from Pat Narduzzi, but nevertheless, that news is out. Nate Temple is out. What does it mean for Pitt? What does it mean for the defensive ends? What does it mean for the defensive line rotation? And what do we think about that defensive line overall? Because it's got a lot of questions for sure. Let's talk about it all here on the Wednesday edition of the Morning Pit. YouTube.com slash Pandalaircom. All right, it's Wednesday. It's the Morning Pit. It's YouTube.com slash Pandalaircom. And I'm Chris Peek from Panther Lair. Dot com. You know the website below, panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com. Don't click that. That's not a link. It's just an image. But you can type those letters into your search bar and go right to the site for the most comprehensive source of Pitt sports news on the internet. Football, basketball, and recruiting. you find it all at pantherlair.com and message boards to talk with other Pitt fans about everything going on in the world of Pitt sports. Whether it's Pitt football, it's Pitt basketball, it's Pitt recruiting. You can have all those conversations with the best online community of Pitt sports fans on the message boards at panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com. It's a place to tune in to make sure you don't miss any of our coverage of Pitt football spring camp, Pitt basketball's huge offseason, which we talked about yesterday on the morning Pitt, and, of course, all the recruiting things going on in uh, the world of Pitt sports right now. And certainly there's a lot of recruiting happening on the football side and a lot happening on the basketball side with the transfer portal. We've got all the coverage you can handle pantherlair.com you know this is our uh, youtube channel here youtube.com slash pantherlair.com it's a place we put all of our pit video content whether it's our these daily morning pit videos every day of the week monday through friday our weekly live show that we do every wednesday night will be live tonight um we we'll live tonight at eight o'clock yeah that's what time we're going live tonight uh 8 p.m right here at youtube.com so i yeah, 8 p.m. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I, I go back and forth between 8 o'clock and 8.30. I don't know if you have a preference on what time we start the live show. If you do, and maybe I'll ask during the live show tonight. Um, if you have a preference, let me know. I kind of like 8 o'clock, but I can understand people prefer 8.30. One way or the other, we'll, we'll be live tonight. Tonight, we're going at 8 o'clock. That, that much has set or that much is set, we will, uh, you know, we can change it in future weeks if we need to, but we'll be live tonight at 8 p.m. for the Panther Lair Show. Me and Jim Hammond will get together, talk about the end of the Pitt basketball season, this, you know, the continuing Pitt training camp, any recruiting and transfer news and that kind of thing. And it's all right here at youtube.com slash pantherlaircom. We do post-game shows as well, although those are obviously over since the seasons are over. There's no more games right now, football or football or basketball. Uh, but when there are games and there are road games, we talk about them after the game right here at youtube.com slash pantalaircom. So if you want to make sure you don't miss any of our live streams, make sure you don't miss any of our exclusive pit video content, all those things I just said, plus our uh, you know videos from training spring camp and all of those things, and then make sure you like this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash pantalaircom. You won't miss anything that we have right here. All right, so the news uh, yesterday, Pat Narduzzi announced that Nate Temple suffered uh, a lower leg injury. I think we can take that to mean ACL, although I'm not a doctor, so uh, don't want to uh, don't don't want to presume. But when we talk about a lower leg injury, that might be uh, that might be it. And you know, the, the first thing, I mean, you know, it's disappointing for Nate Temple. It's the end of his career at Pitt. Although I I, I saw when I was looking at his bio, throwing together an article. Uh, preparing an article. I don't want to say throwing together, make it sound like we didn't put our give it our all, but uh, putting together an article on Nate Temple being out for the season. I, I noticed that he only played three games due to injury two years ago. Um, I I doubt that he would be a candidate to get a seventh year of eligibility. I would say he's pretty much expired his eligibility and his time at Pitt will be done. I would expect him to be a uh, medical hardship waiver this fall. So he won't count against the scholarships or Pitt's 85 man scholarship limit. Um, it will be my guess. Uh, you know, I, I would assume that's what Pitt will do. And I would assume it would be granted and Pitt can, uh, you know, that, that'll open up a scholarship spot uh, with Nate Temple, not being on the, the official scholarship roster, but still being able to go to school and, and all of that. Um, 
disappointing for him for sure. And you know, I, I I can't talk about Nate Temple without talking sort of the circumstances of his return to the roster this year, because Nate Temple went into the transfer portal after the season ended last year. And and is this the most relevant part of Nate Temple's season ending injury? Not necessarily, but it's an interesting one. And it's an interesting one for several reasons because he obviously decided to return. Uh, Brandon George went the same route. They both went into the transfer portal after the season ended and then decided to return like two weeks later, maybe less. And it's pretty interesting that they were welcomed back because Pat Narduzzi doesn't exactly strike me as the type of coach who's going to see guys go into the transfer portal and then welcome them back, even if they might ask to do so, even if they might request to do so. Narduzzi made a point yesterday of mentioning that another player did request to come back and was denied by Pitt. And I don't think that's the first time that's happened. I think probably over the last few years, there have been other instances of guys going into the transfer portal and deciding to return. So it's very interesting to me that Nate Temple and Brandon George were apparently the exceptions. Uh, Pattern News, you talked about them being good team guys, good program guys. I have to think that's probably the main reason they were brought back. I mean, certainly having uh, Brandon George bolsters the linebacking unit. Uh, well, I, I shouldn't just single out George. I think, you know, George and Temple both would be useful players to have on this roster, on the field, not just for what they could do in the locker room, not just for who they are as, you know, as Pat Narduzzi said, team guys or program guys, but because of what they would do on the field. I mean, I think Pitt, you know, with Brandon George back has a pretty, uh, pretty healthy rotation at the linebacker spot. And I think with Nate Temple back, you end up with a pretty solid rotation as well. And that's what we're going to get into in a second is sort of what it looks like with Nate Temple on the roster and, you know, what it looks like without Nate Temple um, on the roster. And I think that's, you know, that that's where the real conversation is to be had. Uh, so those guys, you know, would help for sure. I, I think it's debatable about, um, their level of impact. I, I mean, these are guys who've been around for five or six years and haven't made a huge impact. Nate Temple saw the most playing time of his career last season, season high in, uh, you know, games played, season high in starts, season high in snaps, season high in tackles, season high in tackles for loss, season high in sacks. I mean, everything was a season high for Nate Temple last year. It was really the first year he made an impact of any kind. Brandon George has been in and out, uh, you know, of the, of the lineup, largely in a rotational role, comes back to be what I presume the starting middle linebacker, although I think we might see more rotation at that spot than we've seen in previous years. Uh, but I digress. I mean, we're getting off topic talking about the linebackers. This is about Nate Temple and more to the point, this is about the defensive ends without Nate Temple um, in town, or at least on the roster. Uh, Nate Temple played 11 games and started nine last season. He had 26 tackles, four and a half tackles for loss and one and a half sacks. Um, all of those things were, were career highs for Nate Temple. He played, according to pro football focus, 356 defensive snaps. Again, the most snaps he had ever played. And, and I mean, really all his seasons at Pitt combined prior to last year, he played 100 defensive snaps. <laughs> so yeah, he played about a hundred snaps over the course of three or four years, three active seasons, plus a red shirt. And then he played 356 last year. So a significant uptick in playing time, a real opportunity presented itself for Nate Temple. It's debatable of how much he made of that opportunity. Uh, Pro Football Focus said that he rushed the passer on 164 snaps and recorded 10 pressures. Obviously, playing 356 defensive snaps as a defensive end, and he had four and a half tackles for loss and one and a half sacks. Not exactly a ton of production there, uh, but he was a veteran defensive end. Uh, on a team that doesn't have a lot of them. He was a you know a, a re player returning with a lot of experience um, to a defensive end unit that doesn't have a whole lot of that. So who's left? Who do they have back? And who do they have that they can put on the field uh, without Nate Temple? And, and I understand that probably a lot of Pitt fans who watched aren't sitting back and saying, oh no, what are they going to do without Nate Temple? But I do think at the very least, he was a body to take snaps and 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 play. And they're kind of short on those right now. So they've got Dayon Hayes back. 
And they've got Bam Brima back, and they brought in Nate, uh, Nate Matlack as a transfer from Kansas State. Now, all of those guys are experienced seniors, fifth and sixth year guys. Um, you know, Hayes played, you know, 500 and some snaps last season. Uh, Bam Brima played about 325 snaps last season. Nate Matlack played about 324. And so you, you've got, you know, without Temple, you have three guys who played 300 plus snaps last season. So that's, you, you've got some experience there, but you were going to be looking at Temple to sort of fill out and be a part of that, you know, four man rotation, that two deep at defensive end. So you'd have four guys with 300 plus snaps because after that you get down to Jimmy Scott the redshirt sophomore who played like 11 snaps last year you know and beyond him or no no Jimmy Scott may played more than for uh 11 Jimmy Scott played 109 snaps last season so I, I apologize it was David Ojebwe the redshirt freshman who transferred in from Clemson he played 11 snaps last year as a true freshman at Clemson um, but otherwise your defensive end returning depth is Antonio Kamen and, and Maverick Grazio. And those guys both are redshirt freshmen who didn't play at all last year as true freshmen. Nikai Johnson comes back after playing some snaps last year, but he has since moved inside to defensive tackle where he's about 275, 280 pounds. And it seems like the early reviews are that is, you know, or that that move is, is going well, that it seems like he found a home and feels very comfortable there. So that's good for the defensive tackle spot, which obviously needs help, uh, but it doesn't exactly help you at defensive end. And then they brought in two, or they're bringing in ultimately three freshmen, two are, you know, we'll see what positions all three of these guys play, but two of them enrolled in January, Zach Crothers and Sincere Edwards. Edwards could potentially play inside, is, is, is working outside, but sort of has that build that could slide inside a defensive tackle. And kind of the same thing with Ty Uhas from Central Catholic. He's coming in as a defensive end. He's been at every practice so far this spring. And, but I could see him, you know, moving inside, playing defensive tackle once he gets to pit as well. But if you do that, you're really starting to cut into the numbers. So as it stands, for this year, if Uhas stays at defensive end, uh, you include all the true freshmen, you're looking at about 10 defensive ends. Three of those guys being true freshmen plus two more redshirt freshmen who didn't play at all last year and really could include Ojebwe, who only played 11 snaps at Clemson last year. That's six guys out of your 10 active available defensive ends, and those six guys played a grand total of 11 snaps. So you can see where the issue is with experience. And even Jimmy Scott, I mean, Jimmy Scott playing 109 snaps, he's got 10 times as many snaps as the other six guys combined, Kamen and Grazio and Ojebwe and Crothers and Edwards and Juhas. Uh, Jimmy Scott, who I don't think anyone would sit back and say, boy, Jimmy Scott's one of the most veteran experienced defensive ends. He's got 10 times the snaps as those other six guys have combined. And we're not even getting into production. We're not even talking about what Dayon Hayes has done with his production over the years or Bam Brema has done with his production over the years. Nate Matlack, we can at least excuse because he played in a 3-4 defense at uh, Kansas State. And, you know, when Pitt got him as a transfer, we talked about this a ton, so I don't need to go over it too much. But, I mean, anybody who's watched the Steelers knows that defensive ends in a 3-4 don't exactly put up a lot of production. That's not what they're asked to do. Now, Nate Matlack came to Pitt to play in a 4-3 defense, to play as an edge rusher who could make far more of an impact and put up stats and, and get into the backfield and get sacks and all of those things and tackles for loss, uh, more so than he was getting the opportunity to do in Kansas State's 3-4 defense. Uh, so we we make a little bit of a, an allowance for his lack of production. But what's remarkable is when you look at Nate Matlack's stats from last season, playing in that 3-4 defense, he would have been like, Pitt's second most productive defensive end last year, despite Pitt, you know, playing in a far more favorable defense for pass rushing defensive ends, which probably says something about the guys that they've had, they've had at defensive end. They lose Sam Okunlola, who is, I think, their most promising young defensive end from last season. Um, they're able to bring back Dayon Hayes, so that's a positive. And then, like I say, they bring in Matlack, they return Temple out of the transfer portal, but even with Dayon Hayes coming back, even with Nate Temple available, there's 
still not a whole lot um, at defensive end. And, you know, you, you can look at, like, sort of why that happened, how guy, different guys didn't pan out. They had some small classes in there. Um, you know, I'll be honest, I, I think there's, there's at least there should be, a lot of pressure on Dayon Hayes right now because he's a fifth-year senior, a, a super senior ultimately, but he played as a true freshman in 2020. So this is his fifth active season. He's playing that COVID year, and he hasn't really done that much. He's shown flashes. And we heard Pat Narduzzi even say it yesterday, the key with Dayon Hayes is consistency. He just needs to be more consistent out there. But the, the, the truth is, and it's not unprecedented for a guy for, you know, for it to finally click for a guy in his fifth year. But Dayon Hayes is in his fifth year. And it hasn't clicked yet. That consistency hasn't clicked yet. And you do start to wonder, is it ever really going to click? I mean, at the very least, you can say with Dayon Hayes, he's shown flashes. He's had those moments where, wow, he looks like he's every bit the four-star prospect he was expected to be, or every bit the four-star prospect he was. You know, he looks like he's every bit the caliber of player that Pitt expected him to be, that they were counting on him to be. But those flashes are few and far between. And even if they're not few, they're still far between. And not nearly consistent enough to be what Pitt truly needs him to be, which is a pass rusher in the vein of Rashad Weaver, Patrick Jones, you know, those defensive ends we've seen over the years who get impact on a consistent basis, who get pressure on a consistent basis, who are affecting the game and affecting the pocket on a consistent basis. And Dayon Hayes is supposed to be that, but he has not been that. Now, at the very least, he's shown flashes, which is probably more than we can say for, like, Bam Brima. Bam Brima is now a sixth-year player and has done very, very little over the course of the last five seasons. At some, now, he looks like an NFL player. He's built like an NFL player. He's got all the, the measurables of an NFL player, but he sure hasn't produced. And, I mean, if you, you know, without even bringing up his stats, I'll just point to the fact that he's here for a sixth season. A guy with his measurables should not need to be in college for a sixth year. But here he is because he hasn't really done anything. And to some extent, he was behind other guys. You know, to some extent, he was blocked by older, you know, defensive ends. Desmond Alexandra and Haba Baldonado and John Morgan were here for a long time. And that that's part of it. But it's not all of it. And he certainly didn't really flash when the opportunity finally presented itself last season. So... You lose Nate Temple, who was not the most productive defensive end. Like I said, he had 10 pressures, according to Pro Football Focus last year, on 160-some pass rush snaps over the course of 11 games. That's not a lot of production. Dayon Hayes had a higher pass rush success rate than that. But if nothing else, Nate Temple had played a lot, which most of these other guys, you can't say that about. And so uh, uh, it was already a concerning situation at defensive end and along the defensive line as a whole. And it sort of speaks to how concerning the overall situation is that the loss of Nate Temple makes it even more concerning. They should not be in a position where losing Nate Temple uh, feels like a real blow to the defensive end situation. You know, it, 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 it should hurt their depth at best. And it feels like it hurts a little bit more than that right now. And so this is a tricky spot. Tim Doust, the new defensive line, new defensive line coach, has his work cut out for him. For him, um, He's going to have to get something out. He's going to have to find a way to get Dayon Hayes to be more consistent. He's going to have to find a way to coax something out of Bam Brema. He's going to have to find out if Nate Matlack can actually play in this kind of a defense. And then he's going to have to get some of the young guys ready. Jimmy Scott is going to have to play a lot. David Ojebwe looks like what you want a defensive end to look like. He's got to actually just play, though, and and do something. you know. And, and if it's the redshirt freshman, Kamen or Grazio, then, then those guys. If it's a true freshman like Edwards or Crothers, I don't think anything should be uh, you know, off the table. Everything should be on the table as an option for Pitt uh, you know, with the defensive end rotation. Because nobody outside of maybe Dayon Hayes has really guaranteed themselves a, a, a steady spot here, a starting job and a, and a key, you know, heavy rotational role, I would say. 
well, we'll see. We'll see what Doust is able to do. But it's uh, it's a tricky situation. I think we've known it's a tricky situation. And it gets trickier when you lose a guy with some experience like Nate Temple had. So uh, more football talk this week, more basketball talk this week, more recruiting talk this week. That's what we do right here on the Panther Lair Show. Uh, well, that's what we have tonight is the Panther Lair Show at 8 p.m. right here on YouTube.com slash PantherLair.com. This show is the morning pit. We do these every day of the week. So make sure you subscribe to YouTube.com slash PantherLair.com. That way you won't miss any of our pit video content. You won't miss the morning pit videos. And you won't miss our live Panther Lair Show. Tune in tonight for that. 8 o'clock, me and Jim Hammett talking pit sports with you, your comments and questions. You can be part of the conversation. That's always fun to do. So tune in. Uh, right here at youtube.com slash pantalaircom. Thanks so much for watching the video this morning. We appreciate it. Make sure you get your pit news fill over at pantherlair.com. Have a great Wednesday. We'll talk to you tonight for the live show, and we will catch up with you tomorrow for the morning pit right here at youtube.com slash pantalaircom.